Hello again. So holes, chapters 11 and 12. Uh, sit back, relax, enjoy. And um, let's see what's happening to Stanley. So Stanley returned to his hole. Wasn't fair. Mr. Pendanski had even said his fossil was interesting. He slammed his shovel into the ground and pried up another piece of earth. After a while, he noticed X-Ray had come by and was watching him dig. Hey, caveman, let me talk to you a second, X-Ray said. Stanley put down his shovel and stepped up out of the hole. Say, listen, said X-Ray. If you find something else, give it to me, okay? Stanley wasn't sure what to say. X-Ray was clearly the leader of the group, and Stanley didn't want to get on his bad side. You're, near here. You're new here, right, said X-Ray. I've been here for almost a year. I've never found anything. You know, my eyesight's not so good. No one knows this, but you know why my name's X-Ray? Stanley shrugged one shoulder. It's pig Latin for Rex, that's all. I'm too blind to find anything. Stanley tried to remember how pig Latin worked. I mean, X-Ray went on, why should you get a day off when, you're the, when you've only been here a couple of days? If anybody gets a day off, it should be me. That's only fair, right? I guess, Stanley agreed. X-Ray smiled. You're a good guy, caveman. Stanley picked up his shovel. The more he thought about it, the more he was glad that he agreed to let X-Ray have anything he might find. If he was going to survive at Camp Green Lake, it was far more important that X-Ray think he was a good guy than it was for him to get one day off. Besides, he didn't expect to find anything anyway. There probably wasn't anything of interest out there. And even if there was, he never, he'd never been what you could call lucky. He slammed his blade into the ground, then dumped out another shovel full of dirt. It was a little surprising, he thought, that X-Ray was the leader of the group since he obviously wasn't the bigger or the toughest. In fact, except for Zero, X-Ray was the smallest. Armpit was the biggest. Zigzag may have been taller than Armpit, but that was only because of his neck. Yet Armpit and all the others seemed to be willing to do whatever X-Ray asked of them. As Stanley dug up another shovel full of dirt, it occurred to him that Armpit wasn't the biggest. He, the caveman, was bigger. He was glad they called him gave, caveman. It meant they accepted him as a member of the group. He would have been glad even if they'd called him barf bag. It was really quite remarkable to him. At school, bullies like Derek Dunn used to pick on him. Yet Derek Dunn would be scared senseless by any of the boys here. As he dug his hole, Stanley thought about what it would be like if Derek Dunn had to fight armpit or squid. Derek wouldn't stand a chance. He imagined what it would be like if he had become good friends with all of them, and then for some reason they all went with him to a school, and then Derek Dunn tried to steal his notebook. Just what do you think you're doing? asked Squid, as he slams his hands into Derek Dunn's smug face. Caveman's our friend, says Armpit, grabbing him by the shirt collar. Stanley played the scene over and over again in his mind, each time watching another boy from Group D beat up Derek Dunn. It helped him dig his hole and ease his own suffering. Whatever pain he felt was being felt ten times worse by Derek. Chapter 12 Again, Stanley was the last one to finish digging. It was late afternoon when he dragged himself back to the compound. This time, he would have accepted a ride on the truck if it was offered. When he got to the tent, he found Mr. Pendanski and the other boys sitting in a circle on the ground. Welcome, Stanley, said Mr. Pendanski. Hey, caveman, you got your hole dug? asked Magnet. He managed to nod. You spit in it? asked Squid. He nodded again. You're right, he said to X-Ray. The second hole's the hardest. X-Ray shook his head. The third hole's the hardest, he said. Come join our circle, said Mr. Pendanski. Stanley plopped down between Squid and Magnet. He needed to rest up before taking a shower. We've been discussing what we want to do with our lives, said Mr. Pendanski. We're not going to be at Camp Green Lake forever. We need to prepare for the day we leave here and join the rest of society. Hey, that's great, Mom, said Magnet. They're going to finally let you out of here. The other boys laughed. Okay, Jose, said Mr. Pendanski. What do you want to do with your life? I don't know, said Magnet. You need to think about that, said Mr. Pendanski. It's important to have goals. Otherwise, you're going to end up right back in jail. What do you like to do? I don't know, said Magnet. You must like something, said Mr. Pendanski. I like animals, said Magnet. Good, said Mr. Pendanski. 
Does anyone know of any jobs that involve animals? Veterinarians, said Armpit. That's right, said Mr. Pendansky. He could work in a zoo, said Sid Zay. He belongs in the zoo, said Squid, and he and X-Ray laughed. How about you, Stanley? Any ideas for Jose? Stanley sighed. Animal trainer, he said, like for the circus or movies or something like that. Any of those jobs sound good to you, Jose? asked Mr. Pendansky. Yeah, I like what Caveman said about training animals for movies. I think it would be fun to train monkeys. X-Ray laughed. Don't laugh, Rex, said Mr. Pendansky. We don't laugh at people's dreams. Someone is going to have to train monkeys for the movies. Who are you kidding, Mom? asked X-Ray. Magnet's never going to be a monkey trainer. You don't know that, said Mr. Pendansky. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Nothing in life is easy, but that's no reason to give up. You'll be surprised what you can accomplish if you set your mind to it. After all, you only have one life, so you should try to make the most of it. Stanley tried to figure out what he'd say if Mr. Pendansky asked him what he wanted to do with his life. He used to think that he wanted to work for the FBI, but this didn't seem the appropriate place to mention that. So far, you've all done a pretty good job at messing up your lives, said Mr. Pendansky. I know you think you're cool. He looked at Stanley. So, you're a caveman now, huh? You like digging holes, caveman? Stanley didn't know what to say. Well, let me tell you something, caveman. You are here on account of one person. If it wasn't for that person, you wouldn't be here for digging holes in the hot sun. You know who that person is? My no good, dirty, rotten, pig stealing great great grandfather. The other boys howled with laughter. Even Zero smiled. It was the first time Stanley had ever seen Zero smile. He usually had such an angry expression on his face. Now he had such a huge smile, it almost seemed too big for his face, like the smile on a jack-o'-lantern. No, said Mr. Pendansky. That person is you, Stanley. You're the reason you're here. You're responsible for yourself. You messed up your life, and it's up to you to fix it. No one else is going to do it for you, for any of you. Mr. Pendansky looked from one boy to another. You're all special in your own way, he said. You've all got something to offer. You have to think about what you want to do, then do it. Even you, Zero, you're not completely worthless. The smile was now gone from Zero's face. What do you want to do with your life? Mr. Pendansky asked him. Zero's mouth was shut tight. As he glared at Mr. Pendansky, his dark eyes seemed to expand. What about it, Zero? asked Mr. Pendansky. What do you like to do? I like to dig holes. All right, so that's chapter 11 and 12. Um, pretty interesting. Do you think we're going to learn more about zero? So I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder why the uh, author, Lewis Satcher, I wonder why the author, the narrator, is talking about zero now. I wonder how important he's going to be in the story. So some things to think about. For those of you who have read the story, you already know, of course, uh, who's important and who is a major character and a minor character, and we'll learn more about that uh, as, as the story unfolds. But that's it for now. Have an awesome weekend, and uh, I will see you on Monday. I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks, guys. Bye.